everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome to the football fill-in. There are no Premier League games for us to talk about. So instead, we've decided to do a halfway Premier League team of the season. Now, we have got some basic ground rules for this. We are going to be playing a 4-2-3-1 formation, not the 4-3-3 that I played last year where I had Harry Kane on, yeah. on the wing and Erling Haaland up front. So we're going to go a sensible team formation, a team that we actually believe could win a game of football. Like, yeah. not only just win a game of football, but dominate, right, lads? Team of the, team of the league. Team of the league. This is a team. So we've all had our homework over the last few days. We've all been looking at the stats, the facts, the figures. Super Tom has put together a wicked stat pack for us. And we've all come up with our own teams, yeah, that we think have impressed enough this season. And now we're going to battle it out and try and decide an ultimate team, OK? Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the ground rule for you is that the players have to have played over 70% of games. So lads, without further ado, we're going to start with the goalkeeping position. Are you good to go? Yep. Excited. Excited. Right, goalkeeping. Intrigued. Start me off, Dave Watson, super goalkeeper coach. You can start us off with your goalkeeping nomination and who you think should be. I um, looked through uh, Tom's super stat pack, um, which I was very impressed with, but like I had my own feel on where I was going this season you, with you it. You could just sense so, it. So my three that I was going to make my choice with, from was um, Martinez at Villa, yeah. who I've seen quite a bit of, obviously live as well. Um, Alisson at Liverpool, yeah, and Vicario from Spurs it's are a my heavy three. trio. A heavy trio. Um, I think for sure we know Alisson. We think he's. I I believe he's the best one-on-one -on -one goalie in the league. Um, best goalie and, in the world. Yeah. Yeah, he probably he probably is. Yeah. He probably is. But he's not my goalie of the... Of the, of the so far? Of so far, no. I no, like this. No, no. I like so this. So, I I, obviously, they're, they're, it's a heavy three. They're fantastic. Martinez, obviously, World Cup winner. I think Villa have been incredible this year, and he's a big part of that. But my, my choice is Vicario from Spurs. I think um, him to come in into that Spurs team, never played at this level, yep. 17 and a half million. Yeah and have the stats that he's got, but actually watching him play and do the things he's done, for him to come in the Premier League and hit the ground running, I think he deserves to be in the team of the uh, halfway stage. And he is my pick for OK, me. love that. Who are you saying? Um, I wanted to get your opinions on this because I know we're sponsored by Tom's stat pack, but I'm very <laughs> impressed by it as well. You know, and um, th just looking at this stat here, so you've got Jose Sarr, who I never would have put in there, yeah. but then you've got high claims per game, 1.5, yeah. which is way better than Alisson on 0 0.6. 27 high claims this season. The next closest is Emmy Martinez on 20. Yeah. Why is a Wolves goalkeeper getting so many high claims because that's not a style of play from Wolves that you're, you're dependent on the opposition putting crosses in there yeah, aren't you that's, why is that happening with him so that's that's the style of play of the goalkeeper so he's obviously a goalie who, who likes to come for crosses but again with stats right especially when it comes to goalkeeping stats you need to have seen this with your own eyes I need to see what those 27 high mm. claims are because I've seen Emmy Martinez weird, isn't it? Just so right. Emmy Martinez is next in the list with 20 high claims right but I've seen Emmy, Emmy Martinez come out for high claims in amongst bodies like I'm talking really difficult balls to come out yeah, he wants for. to dominate he, he? he wants to dominate and he's coming for crosses at really important moments like last minutes of games and he's taking balls off players heads I need to see what these 27 claims are for Jose Sar because I'd never have him down as one of those sort of no, goalkeepers me neither and playing behind the back three especially with Dawson and the like in there normally when you're behind the back three a goalie feels a little bit safer yeah a bit safer and, yeah. and, and he doesn't necessarily need to be a front foot goalie because you've got that extra centre half mm. you're normally quite strong across that middle and actually most goalies who play behind the back three would be more reactive type goalies mm. because you feel comfortable with the ones in front of you but that's again looking at the stats like Martinez does come for it Vicario then is third on the list he does come for it yeah. but when you're a coach or playing you always look at the moments so in a nil-nil game or you're winning one nil if your goalie comes to take a set piece or there's a cross and there's loads of bodies in there that's where you're looking oh, for that dominance yeah. because the whole crowd the, your teammates, the manager, 
they love it. And as a coach, that's what I want to see. Yeah. It's having the big pair of balls in the big moments to come and dominate your area. So I were a little bit surprised by them stats because I thought the two goalies who I would have had dominating most would have been a Martinez and Vicario type because I don't think Becker at Liverpool dominates too much because he's got two big, even though they're not a back three. He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to. I mean, them two lads in front of him, Van Dijk especially, when we get on to the other positions, you know, they're dominant in but, the air. But that's also a skill in itself, is knowing when to and when not to come and get involved. So for Alisson, the, he, he's got 11 high claims so far in the Premier League this season. He knows he don't need to do that. But if he does try and get involved, you'll cause problems, not only for yourself, but for your defenders in front of you as well. So if you've got some unbelievable headers of the ball, like Virgil van Dijk, you just let them do it. Stay back and let them do it. And he will make the reactive save if you need to do it. I'm not putting Jose Sar down here, by the way, because 27 high claims, one and a half high claims per game is an incredible stat. Yeah. So he's obviously well, doing that, a very, that, very good job. That's what jumped out to me. I mean, my goalkeeper, I just needed to add something else to, to meet it out a little bit, because my goalkeeper is Alisson, uh, head and shoulders. Um, um, I look at goalkeeping and I just think he last season was magnificent for Liverpool and he's continued it and I think that th there's one moment that sort of jumps out to me for goalkeeping this year yeah. and that was St James's Park when they're one nil down and he clawed that shot out and if that goes in that yeah, game's over game, yeah. and then three points Could be a from that season I just think for he's, Liverpool. A, he's a leader keeper <laughs> I think Vicario has been brilliant this year but I'd just go Alisson okay um, I love this lads this is this is everything I wanted to hear from you. It's a great start to the show, honestly, because if you'd have come, come with me some rogue shouts here, I'd have been a little bit disappointed and disheartened. Well, De Gea's retired now, so I can't yeah, put him in. You can't put De Gea in there. Not an Anna, you're definitely not going to go for an Anna in this now? It was, it was a tough decision. Um, it took me all of 0 0.11 seconds to rule him out. Hey, come on, he's not even made it in Tom's stat pack, so we, 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 we couldn't go there. We couldn't go there. We weren't even an option. OK, so I, I again, same with Watto, came up with a top three for goalkeepers. It's exactly the same as yours, Watto's. Um, Emmy Martinez, Alisson and Vicario. The goalkeeper that I actually chose to go for, um, considering you've chose Alisson and you chose Vicario, is Vicario. Okay. I've gone for Vicario, same as you. Well done, mate. Well done. Well man. done. Um, 17 million quid they bought him for from Empoli, and I totally agree with everything you've said. I do, I do believe that Alisson is the best goalkeeper in the world. I do. It's as simple as that. I believe he's the best goalkeeper in the world. But I think for this season, um, for the goalie that I have saw make some unbelievable saves. But the, the impact. The from, impact, like, yeah. Alisson, like, nobody's denying it, season upon season, and Liverpool are what they are, but for a young lad to come in mm. like that, I think he, he's had more of an, an impact on me yeah. as a football fan or a, uh, an ex-goalie coach, uh, a co all the things we've been with it, he, he's, he's really in the forefront of my brain for what he's yeah. delivered for them. If you were a goalie coach at Tottenham and you, you were responsible for bringing that goalkeeper in, honestly, you could you could do what you want for years because you could live off that guy, seriously. Like, the fact you can b bring somebody in for 17 million quid, a big club, a top six club like Spurs, for as little money as that, and him hit the ground running is phenomenal. So, are we locked in on this one, yeah? Yeah, Vicario? Two off. Yeah, well, I think we've got to go with it. OK, yeah. um, so the next positions that we're going to go for is a left-back. Left-back, <laughs> OK. So we're going to play, like I said, we're playing 4-2-3-1. Left-back is the position that we're going for. Um, Mark, you can get us started on this one if you want. There's, yeah. a few, there's a few contenders for it. The stat pack has got players like Zinchenko, Udogi, Anthony Robinson, uh, Levi Cowell, Lucas Digne, Guardiola at Man City. Um, give, me your, um, give me your player or nominations that you think could, should be the left back. Yeah, I think there was, again, there was probably three that sort of jumped out to me. Um, I think Zinchenko, um, because he plays for Arsenal, mm -hmm. his stats are pretty decent, yeah. uh, goals conceded per game. I think Udogi, uh, not as impactive as a Cario, but as a new signing coming into the, the league, um, I, I think he's a new signing. Yeah. Anyway. Well, he's on loan last year. I hadn't yeah. noticed him yeah. really until this <coughs> season. Um, but very easy for me. Um, with the absence of Robertson and Luke Shaw, who obviously haven't played enough games, um, I think Lucas Digne. I had, I had oh. to go... I think Villa have been so good this season. Um, he's got a couple of assists. Um, he's um, playing in a very, very good defence. He's a big part of the attack. I think he's the, the most complete left back on the list, really, in relation to defensive side of the game, but getting forward. So I like the balance of Digne, and uh, I think it's probably one of the weakest areas yeah. in a Premier League yeah, team of the totally season. Agree, yeah. um, and there's a lot of debates to be had there, but um, yeah, I'd go Digne. Okay, what? Well, uh, yeah, um, I, I like the list, but like you said, normally it would be stronger because you'd have a Chilwell, mm. and like you said, the Shaw and Robertson, Robertson would be yeah. in there. 
and actually then it would be like probably every other position it would mm. be really uh, strong um, on the, on the list that we've we, we've got I mean for me um, I, I've gone for Adogi from Spurs I just think again I think the way they play and what they do he's been a, again a, a standout performer for me I didn't think anybody on on the list that that Tom gave us got anywhere near in terms of the excitement level that he gives me in terms of what he does obviously a lot of them are very athletic but he he seems to be able to get up and down there and and do his bits um have you seen his cross accuracy percentage though go on what is it zero <laughs> percent <laughs> he's never crossed the ball that can't yeah. that but can't be right that's he, to, that's no, no, no. Stat, Can, i'll tell me, you what dracula's love it is if it is zero oh, if it's zero, then that's understandable. He kind of plays as a bit of an inverted yeah. left back, is what he does. Yeah, so he does sure come inside that. a lot with, with it as well. So he's not going to be running down the wing and getting balls no, into the no, box. No, no, no. Let me. Can I just jump on this quickly? I, I had a bit of a top two really of this. Um, it was it was Anthony Robinson at Fulham, who I think's done a fantastic yeah. job. I actually went to watch the Fulham Arsenal game last week, and he was he was brilliant. Honestly, yeah, he was yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah. I also went to watch the Arsenal Liverpool match a few uh, weeks back at, uh, up at Anfield, and Zinchenko had a torrid time. He had an absolutely torrid time. He got he got it, they almost Mo Salah just picked on him all game. They got the ball over to him as quickly as he could. Zinchenko was twisting himself up in knots. He didn't really know where he was, and that for me kind of ruled Zinchenko out as well. Um, but the guy that I'm going to cho choose is the same as you. Are. It's Destiny Adogi, okay? So 15 million quid. Um, and like I say, I, I understand his, his cross percentage is zero, but he doesn't really play that position for Tottenham. He comes inside an awful lot more. But he's big, he's strong. I think he's just signed a new five-year deal as well. Um, and unfortunately for you, uh, Mark, it's again two <laughs> versus one. No, no. Go on, you'll get somebody in the team soon, mate. Oh, Go on, you'll get somebody. I don't live off you two. I live off the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes That's it's... So as, as last year with Harry Kane, when I got voted out for him on the right wing, okay. I won in the comments. But so. this, this team, this season, it's a sensible team. Okay, this team is going to go and win football matches. It's yeah. as simple as that. And if you're a Tottenham fan right now, you are rubbing your hands because it is Tottenham heavy, Spurs heavy, Spurs, Spurs goalkeeper heavy Vicario yeah. and uh, Destiny Udogi at left back. Next position then, lads, right back. And this is where it starts to get a little bit more competitive. This is where there could be a few different opinions. I'm pretty sure there won't be because there'll be one standout guy. But let me have a note. L l think of what you're thinking. Mark Goldbridge, you can start with right back. Go on. Um, for me, I was always going to go with one particular person. Um, I, I did toy with the idea of Kyle Walker. Yeah. I never, never wanted Trippier in there. Um, I do feel that he had a good start to the season, but the last month... Yeah, he's I mean, tailed he, off a little bit, hasn't he? He's yeah. really yeah. dropped. He's cost yeah. him a lot of goals. So it was between Kyle Walker and Trent for me. And yeah. then, you know, shout out to the stat pack again, because I would always go Trent for the goals. I think yeah. that's really important. And as as with Digne, I like a fullback that can go <laughs> forward and can actually put a cross in, yeah. unlike Adogi. But the point I'm going to make is that the really impressive thing for Trent, and it might be distorted a little bit by the fact that he's has been in the midfield a bit, is that he absolutely dominates for successful 50-50s. He's had 22 compared to the next best, which is Pedro Porro on 16. Tackle success is very, very high, yeah. although Pedro Porro is slightly higher with 72% to 69%. And um, recoveries, 131. Recoveries is phenomenal, so, by the way. Yeah, That's I, a massive stat, by the way. I think that puts Trent... That's I would put Trent stat. into the attacking side, but the fact that he's got such a good defensive side... Yeah makes Trent my choice. Can we just sort of clarify what ball recovery means, by the way, Beca and, and why it's so important as well is, for, for me, a ball recovery is basically where the ball is there to be won. It mm. could be won by the opposition, it could be won by your player, but Trent is, is so far ahead of everybody else. 131 ball recoveries. The next best is actually Kieran Trippier of 114. But 131 ball recoveries is phenomenal. It's, it's like, what, five or six a game? Yeah. Well, it's Which, something that Kyle Walker's probably quite good at as well because I think he's over 100. But, it, it, pace but, pace but, is a massive thing. Yeah. So the, the reason why these players are at the top, so Kieran Trippier, Trent Alexander and, and Kyle Walker are the top ball recoverers. Tenacity, isn't it? It's tenacity, it's reading the game, it's pace, it's acceleration, it's getting there before the opposition, basically. And he's and, really good this year. And, 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 and Trent has been fantastic with that. So is Trent, you're locked in? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm locked in with Trent. Well, I, I had um, Trippier, Walker and Trent as, as yeah. my... Um, three standout performers um, and I know we've we've spoke a lot about Trent defending but the stats here actually show a different picture to him yeah. than sometimes you see because you remember the couple of mistakes he's made that lead to goals against and things like that but I think he, he has done uh, phenomenally well 
Um, but he's not my pick. I thought Trippier, until the last month of the season, were head and shoulders, really, because I thought he'd got the lot because Newcastle had that kind of five, ten-second fury and he were after the ball and his recoveries were really high. But I think the amount of games he's played over the season yeah, has sure. just caught up with him a little <laughs> bit with the European stuff. He looks fatigued physically and mentally. That's led to a couple of mistakes. So... Um, I couldn't pick him. The one I've gone for is Kyle Walker, and I know that the stats are not there to maybe back up that he is the number one in the top half yep. of the season, if you like, but we're not basing this all on stats. It's a little bit of feel mm. for me as well. I think he's been the best right-back the Premier League's ever, ever had, mm. and I think he's obviously played in some good teams in it. He's now a great team. I think he's evolved the position to get into that midfield position, which Trent and Liverpool are copying a little bit, if you like. Uh, and I just think if I was going into a big game in the Premier League or a, a European game for England, I would always pick Kyle Walker over Trent because I think he's got the whole package in terms of attacking and defending. Yeah. And he's been there and seen more of it. And I just think the whole whole package for me is Kyle Walker. Cool, this is an interesting one. Do you know what? I can see... You've also got the set-piece delivery. I can, with I, Trent. With Trent. I can see where you're both coming from from here. And I, I, I do, do you know what, right? This is, this is actually... This is kind of... This is a tough decision to make because I agree with what you're saying here, Watto. I think Kyle Walker still, even at this moment in time, is probably the best right-back in the world, maybe. He's in top three in no, the world. Sure. Yeah, he has to be, all right? And again... The best right back probably the Premier League has ever seen. I think for this season, I agree with Mark though. I do. I agree with Mark. I think Trent has just been that little bit more of a game changer. He offers just a little bit more going forward. And bear in mind the team that I want to play, I want some attacking win backs. I do. I want them getting forward. I want them getting inside. I want all of that. I want the assists. I want the goals from them. And I think for me, Trent in the last couple months specifically, has really stepped his game up, massively stepped his game up, in fact. And so that's the reason why I'm going to go for Trent at right back. I'm not going to hold it against you. No, mate. me it's neither. I, I've I've got, got, I have Kyle Walker too. I, I've got Kyle Walker down as, as my second. He's second but in that. We're talking about the best of the best. I totally agree, and, yeah. you know, You're talking tiny yeah, percentages. It, yeah, and look, Trent on the, the forward play this year for sure has been better than This me. is a fantastic team so far. Get down in the comments down below if you disagree with us, which some of you will. It's That's the beauty of football, you know. That is, everybody is allowed their opinion. We're going to go into the centre-backs, all right? We're going to pick two centre-backs now, OK, to complement this back four. Um, Easy, I think. This yeah, is. OK, well, I want to see what you think then because uh, we, we all, we've all done our homework last night. We're all on our group chat, by the way, and I'm putting in last night, I can't wait to see your teams, you know, lad, because <laughs> I'm a little bit excited about this just to see where you go because sometimes you get these rows people think no he's been incredible it has to be him it has to be him so give me your two then Mark I just think that there's two real standouts, standouts. on the eye test as well yeah. you know, not just on the stats test but I think they, they probably come out quite good on the stats um, I mean Van Dijk this season um, is incredible in relation to I mean you can look at the stats there the, the, the aerial wins 82 to 14 um, Jules won as well Um but he's just—he's he's almost like the Van Dyke pre the knee injury. Yeah, I think he's been back so to his dominant. Best, basically. Yeah, really dominant at the back. I think and he's the reason why Liverpool are doing what they're doing as well. When you've got an, like I think for me, everybody says Mo Salah is the most important player for Liverpool, yeah. and I kind of disagree with that because I think for me, you miss a Van Dyke or you miss an Allison. And I think either of them two are out of the team, then Liverpool aren't the same Liverpool. Off. I think the drop off is huge, massively. So I totally agree with what you're saying. I think it's Van Dyke of two, three years ago. Yeah, interceptions, 24. No one comes close. In fact, the closest is uh, Carlos at Villa, 21, yeah. and uh, Anderson at Palace. Uh, Ariel Jules, as I said, 82-1 to 14 lost. And uh, it's just it's just dominant. But the eye test would have Van Dijk in for me anyway. And then the second one would be Saliba uh, at uh, Arsenal. Young centre-back, probably the heir to the Van Dijk throne. Yeah. Um, I think that would be a perfect balance of centre-backs and... I think they'd be completely dominant. Uh, the only other player I'd probably shout out, even though I think he's a bit of a shit house, <laughs> is um, is Romero. And, oh, and, loose cannon! Yeah. Like, what a loose I mean, cannon! He's only for... just in, and he's not been injured. He's, he's only he's played 15 games, yeah. um, so he's only just in the 70. Yeah, yeah. percent I wonder why that is, because he's always on. A, he's, he's just filth, isn't he? But. Yeah. 
but him and, him and Van der Ven do deserve a shout out. Yeah, and, without um, doubt. Yeah, I think where Spurs are in the league, and they've already got a couple of players in. Obviously, um, I think it would be wrong not to mention their centre backs. But there's a lot. There's a good. There's a good collection of people like Konza, Guerhi. Yeah, uh, yeah, Dawson's yeah. having a good Craig season. Craig Dawson, shout out um, Craig Dawson. But they're just not able to compete for me with Saliba and Van Dyke. Yeah, I like that one. No, I, look, I I can't disagree. Um, when I first started putting my uh, my work together before Tom sent us his uh, A A plus stat pack, I, I went Saliba and Van Dyke straight away. I think as a pair they would be phenomenal. But what they've done for both of their teams individually is put some uh, good groundwork in. They've made the team solid. And it gives then the attacking players a yeah. chance to go and win games. Both of them uh, are obviously dangerous in the other box because they want to attack the ball. But I don't think there's anybody come close to them. I agree with you. I mean, if Spurs would have kept the two centre halves mm. fit or not lost them through suspensions with Romero, obviously as well, I think you know we would have been talking it's a different conversation. It, it, maybe it would yeah. have been a little yeah, bit closer. tighter yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. But that's had a, a big downturn in Spurs's. Um, results really when they lost the two of them because I thought as a pair they were looking like probably the best pair in yeah. the league mm. because we're obviously talking here about who we believe is the best but we've got Saliba at Arsenal Van Dijk at um, Liverpool but I think as a pair the Spurs guys were, were really really on top of the game but I don't think there's anybody else really come too close to challenging these guys if yeah. I'm honest with you I had the pleasure of working with Van Dijk for a long time at Southampton and I, you could just see that if he went again to another level nothing were going to phase him he's an absolute machine and I'm just really pleased he come back from that cruise yeah. and has now mm -hmm. showed this season that you can have troubles as you well yeah, know yeah. and you can come back bigger better and stronger and actually the player that he's now becoming is what we all expected him uh, but I'm just glad he's got back to that after a bad injury. But I don't think, to be fair, you know, there's some really good players on that list. But I don't think we can we can argue that them, them two are head and shoulders for me. Yeah, I I, I think um, the word that springs to mind about these two is Rolls Royces. Mm -hmm. They are both absolute Rolls Royces. They are so calm, so composed, leaders on the ball, challenging aerially, winning it, reading the game. They are. That they're every every team in the land, in the country, in the world would want a Saliba or a Van Dijk. It's as simple as that. They are, like I say, they just settle everything down. They read it so well. Again, I've been to watch Arsenal a couple of times lately, and William Saliba, honestly, he's just it, 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 again, it's the same as Van Dijk. They're both in the same class as each other. They both they can see the game two or three steps ahead of where it already is. So they're already in that position, ready and waiting and good to go. Um, and I think the, the, this position was actually probably the easiest I position so. of the entire 11 yeah. mm. positions available. These two, the centre-backs, they almost picked themselves, didn't they? Bearing in mind, William Saliba cost 27 million quid for Arsenal in 2019. So he's been there for a while. It's taken him a little bit of time to find his feet, been out on loan for a few years. Um, but if you look at the amount of money that the players that have got into our team have cost so far, apart from Van Dijk, who did cost 75 million quid, you're not talking earth-shattering amounts of no. money here. 17 million pound for Vicario, 15 million quid for Adogi, Trent came up through the youth system, Saliba 27 million quid, and that's a heavy, heavy back five so far, mm. isn't it, yeah? So we locked in on that, OK? Definitely. Yeah. OK, we're going to move into the midfield, and specifically the centre midfielders, the two sort of, what, holders? Dirty workers, grinders, grafters? Uh, Watto, start me off. Well, I think in the modern game, we've got two really strong centre-halves, yeah. aren't we? And we've said that we want as full-backs to be progressive and attacking. So with the formation that we've decided to go with, you need two strong sitters in there. But they've got to be obviously good footballers as well because they're going to protect your two centre-halves as well. Your full-backs are going to be high. One of them's going to come in to try and give you an overload. But the two sitters in the modern game, I think, are pivotal to a team being successful and allowing you to, full-backs to come higher and give you the extra numbers in the attacking areas. Um, I had um, quite quite a few, obviously, because we've got a few to pick from. I think I, I went a little bit off-key. I looked at Luis from Villa because I'd yeah. seen him live, and I think with Villa doing as well as they've done... He, he's been a top, top He's had a great top, season. Top, he's top had a performer. fantastic season. I obviously have got an affinity with Prowse, who's now at West Ham. He's had his move and he's had a phenomenal season. 
And I, I know how he operates. We know the, the threat from set plays that he can obviously deliver. But as a central midfield player, he's actually a lot better than people give him credit yeah, for. Sure. And I think he's hit the ground running at Spurs this year. I think your two that we'd always talk about is Rice and Rodri. Um, and then I, I looked a little bit at Guimaraes from Newcastle because I thought he'd done really well. Obviously, they've dropped off a little bit, but I think he's been in the engine in there for them. And I thought a little bit about Odegaard, but I don't think as a sitter mm. I'd put him in my team. Yeah. Um, ultimately, after all that fluff, if you like, <laughs> um, the, the, the best midfielder, I think, in terms of being on the ball and doing his stuff is Roderick Man City. Yeah. He would always be in there for me. The stats tell you that City drop off unbelievable when he's not in their team. I think he, mm. he reads the game so well. And he's just past completion is a joke in there. So you know if you find him in that midfield area, he's going to retain the ball for you. And I just went with, with Declan and Rice, obviously over £100 million, so he wouldn't be a cheap fix in terms of what we're talking about the team. But what he's done for Arsenal is really just gel them together and make them um, solid. I think his interceptions, when you look at the stats here, again, he's started to really become accomplished midfield player at the top level now he, and he reads the game well he makes the most interceptions so that's because he can read the game and do it you would like him to try and get his pass completion up anywhere near Rodri and then you've got the complete player but them two for me ultimately looking through all the bits and pieces were head and shoulders above yeah love that oh, I, you've I, got a rogue one I do agree with it but and Watto I was sort of playing around with it and then when Watto said about you know, you've got two really competent centre backs that yeah. you can leave, and two full backs that can go forward. I was like, do I want Rodri and Rice to sit? Do I need Rodri and Rice to sit? Yeah. And I thought, right, Rice is out because Rodri, you've got to go for. He will sit there on his own. He doesn't need Rice to do it with him. He'll sit there, take the ball off the back four, and run the game. And that means Rice has got to go forward a bit, which is not really his thing. So I do agree with Rodri and Rice, and I think a lot of people will. But I just moved at the last minute away from Rodri and Rice and got rid of Rice for Gomerez because I want someone next yeah. to Rodri who's going to leave him. Yeah. And I was looking at Gomerez, his pass completion rate is slightly better than Declan Rice, but his duels won uh, to lost are 135 to 106. So he does lose a lot, yeah. but he's doing a lot more. And his tackle success is better than Rodri and Rice. So I was like, if you put Rodri there and you put Bruno Gomerez next to him, a bit of a shit house. Yeah. Goes and gets the ball. He's a bit more creative. It, for me, it's a system thing. I think in my team, I don't want Rodri and Rice because they're a little bit defensive and I can have someone a little bit more forward thinking. You could even go a even more left field and go, I could put a Ward Prowse there. You know, you, you, I think you can put someone a little bit more creative. So I've just gone Gomez and Rodri. Now, do you know what? All of this, I love it. I think this is the be again the beauty of football opinions, and I totally agree. And I think that would work phenomenally well. There's, like, can I just? I just want to name some of the players in this list, by the way, that could could fill in this position: Conor Gallagher, Declan Rice, Rodri, Gimenez, John McGinn at Aston Villa, been yeah, fantastic. Decore at Everton, Prousey, Douglas Louise, Palinia at Fulham. Mm, He's like been it. phenomenal. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Susek at West Ham and Martin Odegaard. Um, but I I agree with Watto. I'm gonna I'll, I'll agree with Watto. I think it has to be Rice and Rodri, the two hours. Um, I just think that. I think Rice would be the predominant sitter in these two. I get it. I understand what you say about Gamares, and I think he would get forward a lot more, and I think you could allow that with the centre-backs, the defensive strength that you've got behind them. Um, but I just think Rice would concentrate on just doing what he did for West Ham, basically. He's doing it a bit more at Arsenal, where he's trying to get a bit more forward and he's trying to get involved in stuff, but you can just see that it's not fully there yet. It's not quite his game. Whereas Rodri does get forward, he does get you goals, and he does get assists, and I think he would be that player that goes in there more, but also offers that sort of defensive stability. Um, but I think if you get them two together in that sitting midfield, that is, that's the dream. Mm. It is the absolute dream. If we had a Rodri for England who could start alongside Declan Rice, yeah, oh my gosh, World Cup, forget about it, it's won already. It is, that is the missing key for England, isn't it? But I think Having that Rodri. about with the team, isn't it? Because you're going to have six offensive players. Yeah. You've got two centre-backs and two guys here. Yeah. And when you're dominating the game, the better footballer out of the two sitters can step in as yeah, well yeah, yeah. And, and do his bit. And I think then 
that's where you want the overloads. And when you're dominating a game, right. the front six have got to be the dream ticket. And if one of your two sitters can join in to make you a seventh up there, you know, teams are going to find it difficult against you for sure. So Declan Rice was 100 million quid, 105 actually. Rodri, do you know how much they paid for him? 24? I want to say 30 odd. 60. 60 million quid, so it blows our budget so, so, out of the water. Yeah, we've got expensive. But it doesn't matter because it's not about that. What it is about is the first half of this Premier League season. Yeah, sure. And I'm, I'm, I agree with what you're saying, Gamaras. I think he'd be fantastic, but we're locking in Declan Rice and Rodri, okay? Yeah, I think they're two good players, mate. That's a, that's a ridiculous, that's a ridiculous back six. <laughs> this seven, sorry. Ones. That's a ridiculous back seven, isn't it? Yeah. That's a ridiculous back seven. But now it starts to get a little bit this is, more... This is the one for me. This starts to get a little bit more fruity, okay? Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're going to go for that number 10 position now, yeah. okay? Yeah. And this is where I think we could have three different players here. I really do yeah, think no, sure. we could have three different yeah, players here. Yeah. Um, Watto, come on. Yeah. You can start well, us off. I, I think the list... Is um, probably not as big as everybody would say. You know, Tom Statpacks give us uh, Cole Palmer, Phil Foden, Julian Alvarez, Bruno Fernandes, and James Madison. Okay, quickly, sorry, your number 10 position, by the way, if you're not familiar with what, like, you know, it's kind of that guy that's behind the striker. Yeah. It's, it's the one in the middle behind the striker. We're playing a 4 2 3 1, so he's kind of he's up the pitch, and then you've got your two wingers either side of him. And then you'll have your main striker in front of him. So that's it's that guy in that sort of midfield engine that sits in front of the two sitters and tries to sort of open it all up. Yeah, he's not he's not a free position, but he's a floating yeah. position trying to find the spaces. And he's normally one of your cleverest or the cleverest player. Yeah. He finds the spaces. He's very good at scanning, getting on the half turn, and he can produce the little passes that open up the tight defences, yeah. especially when they're sat on the back edge of the box I think for me at the start of the season um, Madison would have won this he would have been yeah I totally team. agree I totally agree ultimately when we're talking about the amount of games and what we're talking about that's worked against only 11 him. games he got only. and then obviously a really bad injury yeah. but I think if he would have been fit he would have it, been it, this would have been nailed on for him yeah for sure so well obviously if Kevin De Bruyne had been fit he might have had something to say about it through that yeah, yeah but he's that. only again played uh, I think one two, game two oh no he's, he's one game it, yeah, yeah. He may as well so, be Calvin Phillips. So, so, <laughs> Probably played more than Calvin Phillips, yeah, actually, would, who well, hasn't been injured. When he come on for 50 minutes at the weekend, he's yeah. done a few, yeah. So for me, um, Madison, I went Madison, Foden or Palmer for the number 10. Obviously, Madison didn't meet the criteria, so we were out of it. Um, I don't think um, Phil Foden is as good in there as what I've seen Cole Palmer. And I've gone a little bit on what I spoke about Vicario and a doggy to some regard. Palmer, yes, a lot of money, so he's breaking a budget again, 50 million. But 42.5, actually. Well, probably with the add-ons, he'll be yeah. 50 odd million. And he's he's gone to a new team, having to prove himself. We know he's a good player for sure. Um, and to be fair, he could probably play anywhere. Yeah, that three yeah. behind yeah, the centre forward. But I think, as a young player, he's played 17 games. He's got eight goals. He's got four assists. He's created big chances. In a Chelsea team that aren't, aren't firing up trees at the minute. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think, for me, he's just edged above Foden because I like him in that central area because I think he can do things either way. And I think 50 million quid has actually been a snip and he's been Chelsea's best player. And I picked him as my number 10. Ooh, I think it's Goldberg. depressing, actually, because I think it's such a... I can't argue with anything what I said, yeah. by the way, but I think it's such a depressing selection Yeah. because there's, there's nobody there. I, I mean, I think Cole Palmer's had a really good season, but when I watch him, I don't go, God, I think he's amazing. Yeah. I think he's having a great young season breakthrough, but a bit like Ganacho at Man United, I just think that they're on. That he's on a pathway to something, and I don't know what that pathway is yet. Madison's not played enough games. I mean, look at stats of Bruno Fernandes. Yeah. He, he shouldn't be there. I watch Man United every week. He shouldn't be there. But you look at the stats amount are decent, of yeah. the, the, the accurate long balls, 81. Yeah. But that says a lot about United. Crosses, crosses into the box. Bruno Fernandes, 128. By far, by far ahead of everybody else. And, and also the wow. biggest one, big chances created, nine. Yeah. That's more than anyone else. But I watch Man United and I'm like... I don't mm. think he's had a very good season, yeah. so there's, but I can't put him in there. So for me, I would go with the, the eye test, and out of all those players, the player that I think is technically the most gifted and the player I would want to watch, even though he wears light blue, is Phil Foden. Yeah. Um, I just and I, and I think 
I, th I think I'd have to go Phil Foden. I completely agree with Watto on Palmer, yeah. but for Palmer, he's still work in progress, whereas I think I would have gone Madison. Yeah. But I'll go Foden. Yeah, I love it. I love this. Um, again, this is, it, for me, it's between the two, Cole Palmer and Phil Foden. I agree with what you're saying, Mark. I think Phil Foden is probably a better player. Mm. I think he is a more rounded player and would offer you more. And I think if you're talking about so for England in the summer, if you had to pick one of these players, you're picking Phil Foden. But I think for this season, for performances, for hitting the ground running, for making the transfer, the step up, the age, all of the pressure that surrounded it, I think Cole Palmer is the guy that I would pick at number 10. 17 Premier League appearances, eight goals. Eight goals is fantastic, by the way. Some big penalties, calmness on the ball. Just looks like... He looks like a young Phil Foden, really, doesn't he? He looks like he doesn't really care, not phased by it all. Just, no, he's enjoying his football, just, and he looks yeah, like he's very, Yeah, very confident. Just enjoys himself. Uh, four assists as well. Um, I just think, yeah, for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a, Phil, uh, sorry, a Cole Palmer in that number 10 position, OK? Um, but again, it's... Okay, get in the comments, everybody. You could say Phil Foden. You've got Julian Alvarez that could be in there as well. I feel for James Madison that getting his season cut short with only 11 games so far. Um... We're going to go for the left forward, the left winger, if you like. Um, and this is an interesting little list as well. We've got Hunman Son in there. We've got Anthony Gordon, Jared Bowen and Dwight McNeil. Uh, so there's four to pick from. You could pick anybody else if you really wanted to. Um, Mark, you can start us off on the left forward. I do. I, I often have put Anthony Gordon in when I've been doing, you know, teams of the month and stuff like that. I do think he's had a really good season because this is a player that, Last year, when they bought him, I was like, what, did they spend 50 million, 60 million, uh, 40 million? He was 45, 45 million. And I was like, what's that all about? Ridiculous. Yeah. I, I'd, not, I'd not seen I agree with you. I thought that was an awful yeah. lot of money. But yet again, it's another signing that Eddie Howe has made where you go, like Trippier and other people and Dan Byrne and people like that, where he's just took a player where you sort of go, what's he doing there? And then he's took him to a next level. And, I, you know, even in the Sunderland game at the weekend, he's just got that maturity... Yeah passion but ability um i don't know what he looks like stats wise i mean big chances created 10 so he's better than dwight mcneil and jared bowen uh crosses more than anybody apart from dwight mcneil who's a, you know I, I think dwight mcneil does deserve to be in there yeah, as well he's yeah, had a really sure. good season and really suits um obviously everton the way everton play yeah yeah so i think anthony gordon's a, a really good consideration but it's got and i know he's played down the middle a lot this season but he ain't going to play down the middle in my team this season, but I've got to get him in there. So Son, I yeah. think I think he's been empowered by the absence of Kane, you know, captaincy, really leader in that team, yeah. technical player, always looking for the pass if it's not on, but if the shot's on, he'll take it. And again, it's another Spurs player who is um, absolutely rocketing under Big Ange. So it would be Son hands down. Off like it, what up? Yeah, um, I think. For me, I, I went the same as Mark. I went for Son. I think, I think the captaincy has, has elevated him. I think he's 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 enjoyed the responsibility of being a leader for that team, and for sure he's really one of the key components in that Tottenham team. But he's got everything when he plays out on that wing. You know what I mean? He can come inside and be that second centre forward and play as a second centre forward yeah. for him and create chances that way. But he's so quick when they have the transitions. Um, and obviously the stats here are showing he's created 11 big chances out of 20 games. He's scored 12 goals. Mm. If you're playing on the side and can have them kind of figures, oh. there's nobody really going to live with you. I, I agree in terms of the Gordon chat. I think he's probably the one who got closest to it. I think Bowen now is probably playing more like a centre forward yeah. at West Ham, if I'm honest with you. I don't think Martinelli's done enough at no. Arsenal this season um, to, to go, get spoken about. I toyed a little bit with Ganacho on the left in terms of thinking about him because I think he's the only player in Man United that could say they've there's done anything really this season yeah. on a consistent basis. But I didn't think he, he was anywhere near Son. And in the end, again, I thought this was probably one of the easier 
choices, mm. I thought he would have shoo in. And I'd be very surprised if you work against us on that one. I actually did work against you on this oh, one. Yeah. I actually did work against you on this one. I had two, again, same as you. Um, Hunman Song, and I, thought, I think he's been incredible. I do think he's actually thrived in the absence of Harry Kane. I think he stepped it up a little bit, being the captain. Um, but I actually went for Anthony Gordon. I just think that Hunman Song hasn't really been an out-and-out sort of left-forward, left-winger. This He has played through the middle a lot more. Um, whereas Anthony Gordon, he is religiously out on that wing and he is beating players and he is ratting. And I, we did His a podcast. Immense, His work rate is, th that's for me what I want. I want somebody who's going to be that dogged, just keeps at it, keeps at it, dog with a bone. And we did a podcast, I think it was with James Tarkovsky the other week. And the best way we could describe Anthony Gordon was a rat. He was a rat, and he's just relentless, and he keeps snitch, going. He's keeps a snitch going. in the dressing room, is he? Can't be trusted. No, no, not like that. Not like that. I think that's that. what Eddie House created there. Without you doubt. talk yeah. about all their plays and the work rate. A Joe Linton, yeah. um, Almiron, Guimaraes, everybody. Gordon, yeah. all these players, the work they do against the ball, mm. and uh, it does step you up to another level. Yeah, because for sure. When you've got ability yeah. and you're prepared to do the uglier side of the game, you actually look like a team, and that's what the Newcastle fans deserve. Oh, more away, but at St James's Park, yeah. when you're all in like that, and Gordon looks like he's a different player to the player at Everton, and we could argue about the 45 million, but actually now yeah. that looks a very, very good deal at 45 million. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, um, yeah, I, but listen, for me, it's, it's, it's we're talking tiny percentages here. We're talking about Hunman Son and Anthony Gordon. You know, it's, it's there's not too much in it, and I, but but I'm happy to bow down for this one and go with Herman Son. So we're going to have to lock him in. I, I would have gone for Gordon. I think he's been a fantastic season. A really, really fantastic season. Somebody that I want on my team. Do you know what I mean? That doggedness and even the way that he sort of gets up and gets the crowd going now and then. I love that. I love seeing that. Right then, lads. Uh, right forward time. Um, a few of the nominations for you. We've got Huang He Chan at Wolves, who has had an unbelievable season, by the way. Um, Ten goals out of 20 Premier League appearances. Uh, we've got Bernardo Silva, uh, Garnacho, Man United, Mo Salah and Bukayo Saka. Uh, Watto, I'm going to start with you on this one. Um, who do you see has had the best, most impressive uh, first half of the Premier League season so far? I think this list is quite tough to pick from, if I'm honest with you, because I don't think that one of the play, the player that I've picked has not been as good as he's been in previous seasons. Yeah. But um, I, for me, my last pick were between Salah and Saka, but I have to say Wang He Chan yeah. for Wolves deserves the mention you gave him because I think, again coming into the league and probably the most underrated team in the league actually yeah. they've been phenomenal Wolves and he's had a real big impact on it but my two to really pick from were between Salah and Saka yeah. and I don't think either of them have probably hit the heights that the managers the fans or even themselves would have wanted to hit this yeah. year but for me I just think um, Salah's stats are always going to be up there 20 games 14 goals 8 assists created 17 big chances. Oh. When you're in a team like Liverpool, they're going to lead to goals inevitably yeah. at some stage. And I think the weight of stats tells me that this is the right choice that I made. I went with Salah. I went with Salah on my gut before I saw uh, Tom's stat pack. And this has really just backed it up for, for me. But strangely enough, I didn't think he'd probably been as good as the stats are telling. Yeah, sure. That's what I yeah, felt sure. from him this year. And obviously, look, Liverpool are going to miss him now. He's going away for a period of time. And it'd be interesting to see, even though I don't think he's done as well as what he would have hoped, whether they have that little drop-off in, depending on how many games he's away for. But Salah is my pick. I think on that side, I think it really came down to him and Saka. And I just think he delivers the whole round performance more so than Saka. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's a bit like Trippier and Trent for me. I think I had Saka and Salah. And I think Saka, maybe six weeks ago, like yeah. Trippier, would have been a really good contender. I look at some of the goals. I mean, that, that equalising goal, I think it was Chelsea, with a cross to the yeah. back post. So, and, 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 and on crosses, 113 crosses to 24 for Salah. So Saka's way more creative, having said that. Um, Assist-wise, Salah's got more. So different types of wingers. But no, there's no doubt in that Saka over recent weeks has just fell off. Yeah. Probably similar. I think there's too much pressure on him. Uh, too, if he doesn't have a good game, Arsenal don't score. Um, so he's got a lot of pressure on him. Whereas Salah thrives on that pressure. I agree with Watto that I think Salah this season 
to the untrained eye probably looks like he's had not as many goals and assists as he has. But year in, year out, I, I, I mean, as a United fan, I hate to say it, but I don't understand why he's not in the Ballon d'Or every year. Yeah. Because his, his numbers in the hardest league in the world are incredible. He competes goals. Se season on season. Goals, he competes like a striker. Yeah. Assists, he, he, he outdoes the best creators. Yeah. Um, unbelievable player and oh, I said it a couple of weeks ago I watched Man United play in Liverpool it was nil nil and there were Liverpool fans criticising Salah and I'm like I hate Liverpool wow. as a United fan yeah. and he is easily <laughs> one of the best players in the world yep. and in this league um, so yeah Salah comfortable for me yeah I totally agree Les. I'm with you all the way my my two choices actually were between Mo Salah and Huang Huang I, I think yeah, I, it was brilliant I, I, I just think that some of the games that I've watched of him playing for Wolves just it, I don't it's like he's found a, another three or four levels mm. because last season he scored a few goals when he first started but this year for some it, it's like he's really 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 gone I wouldn't be surprised if he actually got a move again Maybe he's not very creative though is he no it's true it's but goals. if you if you look at the way that he played he, honestly he's, he, he mm. could go again you know in January maybe at the end of the season it wouldn't surprise me if there'll be teams sniffing around him yeah. but it has to be Mo Salah it does it has to be Mo Salah I've got to like I say I got to see him live a few weeks ago when I went up to Anfield to watch him against Arsenal and he terrorised Inchenko <laughs> honestly he terrorised him the amount of times Liverpool would just get the ball and just hit that big diagonal over to the top of him and he's already on his run he's already knows what he's going to do with it um he, he cuts inside like an absolute joke he is he's phenomenal 20 games 14 goals eight assists has to be Mo Salah out on that right wing simple simple though. simple as that right we're going to go to our central attacker the center forward the showpiece the big boy um and we've got a few nominees <laughs> for this because it's been it's not been as straightforward, obviously, with, uh, you know, Alfie, um, Alfie ha, uh, Erling Haaland getting an injury, um, what, about a month ago, six weeks ago. There's been a few other players, other strikers that have been shining. So, Ollie Watkins, uh, nine goals. Dominic Solanke, 12. Isaac for Newcastle, nine. Jared Bowen, 11 goals. 11 Premier League goals for Jared Bowen. Uh, Brian and Bremer at Brentford and Darwin Nunes, who we have to put in there as well. Five goals for Liverpool. Um, Watto, I'll start with you then for the centre forward. Um, I think it's really easy. Oh. Um, only on, we're going on, he's the greatest centre forward that the Premier League's had, yep. in my opinion. He's going to go Solanke. <laughs> um, and, and Solanke's so <laughs> close. But I, my three were Watkins, Haaland and Bowen. Yep. I think Bowen, mm. to, to change his role coming from a side and playing centre forward for West Ham, and his, his stats are incredible. 11 goals in the 19 games. Um, to be fair, I were a little bit uh, dismissive of Solanke until Tom Statpak, but I didn't put him in there because I, I just thought that Watkins and, and Bowen just come into a new position, yeah. what, what I thought he were deserving of that bit. Watkins has done phenomenal for Villa. Um, nine goals, eight assists. Eight assists is massive. It's ma way. Massive, wow. yeah, massive. Um, he, he's, he's probably not as clinical as what you'd want him to be because they're not going to create as many chances Villa as what a City do so I think when he miss, misses 13 big chances that's going to hurt Villa a little bit yeah. more um, but I can't look away even though he has been injured towards the end of it Haaland's the, the best centre forward the Premier League's seen he's just got the lot um, and there's no way I could pick a team without him and not put him in it okay Simple. Yeah, I, I think it's between Watkins and Haaland for me. Okay. Um, and I struggled a little bit because I agree that Haaland is quite simply the best. And he's only played 15 games, so he's only just in there. Yeah, so he's, just, he's a goal yeah. a game, basically. Goals per match, 0 0.9. But then I, went, I sort of compared them and I went, oh, OK, well, 14 goals to nine for Watkins. Um, eight assists to Watkins to Haaland's four. Um, shots. Only Watkins got the second most assists this season, by the yeah. way. Yeah. For a centre forward, that's incredible. And a lot of this is down to playing in a Man City side. You're going to get more shots. Because, yeah. um, you know, Haaland's played five games less, but he's had three more shots, so he's yeah. getting more service. Shots per game, 3.8 to Haaland, 2.7. Um, Haaland's missed more big chances, and uh, Hot Watkins has obviously created more. So I think if you were going on the stats, you should give it to Watkins. Yeah. You should give it to Watkins, because he's a more complete striker on less service. But I also think Haaland... I'd have to put him in my team. I mean, he's a goal a game. Yeah, and it's, it's guaranteed. With, with everything that's yeah. around him, am I just going to put Watkins in there because he deserves it, or am I going to put Haaland in there because he's the world's best striker? But this is this is the this is the difficulty of this yeah. position. Okay, is 
It's based on this season. Mm. And it's okay? close. Really. It's this season's team of the season. I agree with what you're saying here. Erling Haaland is the best central striker in the world, probably. Mm. Probably. Top three, anyway. Certainly in the Premier League, okay? He is certainly the best centre forward. But has he been the best centre forward in the Premier League so far this season? Right, I'm going to go Watkins and I'm going to tell you why. Because I've got Son and Salah either side who can score me loads of goals and Haaland can't create for them. So I think if you add Harry Kane in this team, I'd go Harry Kane because of the goals and the assists. And I think Haaland needs service. And I'm looking at that team and I'm thinking Salah and Son are going to work better with Watkins. Like it. Like oh, this is, do you know what? I'm going to blow this all out the water then, OK? <laughs> He's going to go Nunez. I'm going to blow <laughs> this going all out Solanke, the water. You're going to Solanke, I'm going to go Solanke. I've got, I've, got, I've got Dominic Solanke here, OK? 19 million quid they spent for in Bournemouth in a team that don't actually score an awful lot of goals. Mm. Dominic Solanke for 12 goals in 19 Premier League appearances so far this season is a phenomenal return. A phenomenal return. He's scoring goals with every part of his body, headers, volleys, left foot, right foot. I just think for somebody that's impressed me the most this season, and Ollie Watkins was actually my second choice, I, I, I think Erling Haaland for this season has not been quite en- at the level of last year. I just don't think he's been at the level of last year. I think his players have played better in that centre-forward position. So I went for Dominic Solanke. But do you not... And I, I would agree with that, but, you know, with the, a big shout-out to Stats Pack Tom again, because I, when you look at it, there's a big hole, which I've only just noticed. He creates nothing. Yeah. And actually, he's had... He's got the worst shot accuracy on 36%, and he has more shots per game than anybody he, apart from Haaland. But, so he misses a lot of chances. Yeah, he misses a lot but of he chances. he creates nothing. But he doesn't miss a lot of big chances. But okay? I, would, I yeah. would say... Yeah. That's a big difference. But he um, could be shooting from 30 yards, but yeah. the big chances he missed... Look, he's, low, sorry, yeah, he's, he's missed only seven big chances this season. Compare that to Erling Haaland's 17, 17 yeah. big chances. And Ollie Watkins, 13 big chances misses. There, when when a, big, a big chance, by the way, is a chance that... Could or should be a goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could or should be a I, goal. I think Solanke is a little bit too like Haaland. If yeah. You, if he's you, a wish, if, he's a wish if, Haaland. If, <laughs> he's if, a Poundland Haaland. If you've been brutal in terms of yeah. the, what, your Brace description nothing. of creating and where you want your players to be, they're very much of a likeness. And I, even though Solanke has been phenomenal, I couldn't pick uh, Solanke over Haaland in what we're doing. Yeah. I think the argument that you make in terms of the the two wide players and Watkins then working up front is the only way I could go against my choice of Haaland. I couldn't go to Lanky over Haaland yeah. in the way the team's playing. Yeah. I couldn't. I'd rather go Darwin Nunez than Solanke. <laughs> now, this is controversial because Darwin Nunez has missed 18 big chances, <laughs> which is no. basically double at most other people. But Darwin he's, Nunez he's played 19 games and he's missed 18 big chances, so you are guaranteeing one, one per game that he could have scored. Yeah, and he's it. had the biggest misses of this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah, are yeah. big misses. Yeah. Um, he's got his own category for misses, actually. <laughs> They're not even big misses. But um, he has created seven big chances yeah. and he has got six assists. I, I still think with Darwin Nunez, there's there's something. I there. totally agree. I there's think it's a well beat of that. Start really scoring. Did. Yeah. No, yeah. But this is the first time on all eleven that we've all gone different. Different. And yeah. we can't get that too. But to we, have to. We're, know, we're, we we're have to. we're going to have to pick a manager. We're, Watkins in a minute, is the best sure. of both worlds, I reckon. <sighs> well, we've got Watkins, Solanke, Haaland. Yeah. Wow. I, I think it's really tough, this. I, I, I think everybody will be putting in the comments that we are insane if you don't put Haaland what, in Right, if you've got to pick a team tomorrow and you've got to pick a centre-forward, a centre-striker, out of them three, who are you picking to start for you tomorrow? Based don't, on don't lie, season. don't lie. Based on this season? Yeah. I'm still going to go Watkins for balance. Who I'd picking? still take Haaland. OK, I'll pick Ireland. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. The chat's going to be good. No, but it makes sense because Solanke's closer to Haaland than he is to Watkins, so I can live with that. Yeah, it, it, that, that's the only reason. I couldn't put ever Solanke above Haaland. No, I, I totally agree. But the way agree. you were going to play the game and how you talked about the wide players, I saw it for sure. 
but like I, you, I just you just can't. Get I, this. I, I get it. I, I, I'm and just it's only because going... it's this season. This if season, we're going best we, players. We know that Erling Haaland is the best centre forward. We know that. Well, you, yeah, exactly. You know that, but it's not what we're doing today. We're doing team of the season so far of the Premier League season so far. I think Dominic Solanke has impressed me so much this season. Yeah. How he's yeah. progressed, and again, he's another player who could get a move. He could get a move at the end of the season, it, without doubt. But I think if I'm picking a team to start tomorrow, I would want. Erling Haaland up front just for what he would do to the opposition he would strike fear into that opposition they would look at all the other players around him and go oh my gosh it's going to be a hard day with the, te- with the team that we've picked they'd all be wanting to mark Haaland the others would have a, a free run him. they'd have a free run it's like if you were trying to man mark players it'd be like well we need to put two on him to- it's, it's just an absolute nightmare for any team coming up very against good, him very very good so team. are we going to do it that's a difficult this is a difficult one and I don't. I think there's going to be a lot of people in the comments down below but I think it's the obvious choice the, the, probably the sensible choice we have to go for Haaland right well, I've gone Watkins. I'm happy to go with Ireland. Okay, I think, sorry, and I agree, and I, oh, with you. Yeah, your football then. theory were probably better than ours. Yes. But I just couldn't never not pick no, Ireland. No problem there. Okay, cool. So we've we're, we're finished off the, uh, the, good the, team. Final, the final 11. What with, a team. With I'd a love to be manager. It's a proper team, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Right, let me quickly run it through then. In goal, we've got Vicario. Right back, Trent. Left back, Udogi. Centre back, Rolls Royce, Perrin, and Virgil van Dijk and William Saliba. In the holding midfield role, we've got the two R's, Rodri and Declan Rice. Uh, on the right wing, we've got Mo Salah. Left wing, we've got Hunt, Min, Son. Through the middle, we've got Cole Palmer. And then finishing it up at top is Erling Haaland. It's time to pick a manager, lads. Who do you think is going to get the best out of this lot? Well, I think for me, because we're doing team of the season so far, there has to be three candidates. Yep. Um, one of them probably won't get the credit he deserves, which is Jurgen Klopp. Yep. Uh, he's revolutionised the midfield, which is the hardest thing to do, and took them from nowhere to top of the league. They've, don't, they've not lost any game. Mm-hmm. Really. The Spurs game was obviously robbed. So I think Jurgen Klopp has to be there. And then you've got Ange... And Emery, yeah, um, incredible jobs. But, I mean, for Emery, he's done it over two seasons, um, and then what Ange has done at Spurs, losing Harry Kane and turning them into a team that statistically, player for player, they're almost in every position. Yeah, and the um, injuries he's had to deal with, yeah. and the fact that he never blames anything on injuries, he never blames anything no. on anything other than no, this is my team, and we do what we do, so suck it up and get on with it. Yeah. So, and the style of football they play as well, um, and uh, same with same with Emery. I think what he's done. Very, very similar to Ange in relation to not style of play, but clubs they've gone into, not had loads of money to spend um, and revolutionised the fan base, the structure. Um, So for me, I'd like to, I I think the boring choice is to give it to Klopp because he's done so well, but I want to be a bit revolutionary like Ange and Emery and I'm going to go with... (sighs) So close. It really is close. I'm not, it's a a hair breath here. I'm going to go... For the home record, Emery. I love that. Emery. I, I think it's a, a, a very compelling argument mm. you've put together. <laughs> I, I think it's hard not to mention Guardiola, even though he's got the, the ultimate tools at his yeah. disposal, um, because ultimately you still have to be a man manager, you have to be a tactician, you have to be, be able to you know, get them through a training week. Um, and, and when you've got probably 25 superstars to keep them all happy he is a phenomenal manager but we'd all like to manage his team because yeah, he's sure. got the best um, tools at his disposal uh, the one name I mentioned I think it was last week or the week before was Gary O'Neill mm. I think what he did um, at Bournemouth were very underrated but actually coming in a week before the season and we're talking about a half season yeah. performance here I mean pfft, what what that Wolves team, I mean, it's been phenomenal. And um, probably he's not going to win the award because he's not seen as uh, the bright light, the big name. But I think over a year, and certainly even half a year now for Wolves, I think he's been exceptional. And people who I speak to in the game uh, are very appreciative of his work on and off the field. Um, my choice really... We're always going to be probably be between Emery and uh, Big Ange. I think the one thing I would say about Big Ange is I think if you're a football fan and Tottenham have always been brought up on playing a certain style, I think he's been really exciting. Some would say um, 
a little bit naive in some ways, yeah. but he believes in what he's doing, and I think he's been a breath of fresh air for the league. Um, and I would probably always want to watch that style of football, if you like, but I think, for me, Emery is my choice because I think what he's done at Villa, um, it's not as exciting a brand of football, but I think they all know what they're doing and they play a certain way and they've all bought into him. Um, a couple of players who I know who have worked under him, who, who I've worked with at Southampton, said tactically he is phenomenal. The players love the work, they love the insight and how he goes about his business and I think the home record speaks for itself. And I think, not from nowhere, because that would be very disrespectful to Villa, but I think that they're the one who have come out of the pack and I, th I think he's he's been a breath of fresh air. I just remembered one more thing as well. In cool. relation to Villa, I wish I'd got it in in the first take. I've never seen a team in years do what Villa did to Man City in that home game. At Dominic. Hart. Absolutely. Did they have one shot? Did they have one shot all game or something? Man City. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and phenomenal. Absolutely and in, destroyed and in that them. week to beat Arsenal and City, and City one yeah. at that, home. That, and, and that's what the players had said to me. Tactically, he knows the game and he knows how to beat every team. You're not, you're not all, you haven't got the tools of Man City, so you're not guaranteed to win every game. But when you've got a manager who is as astute as what he is and really wants to make an imprint on the league with Villa, I think you can't look outside of him, to be honest. I love it. I absolutely love it, lads. Um, I was going to go for Ange, but I don't care. Honestly, I don't care because they're both... Spurs fan. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, Spurs fan win Arsenal. Honestly, I, 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 yeah, it doesn't work, does either it? of them, <laughs> either of them that you've mentioned, it doesn't bother me one little bit because I think they both do an absolutely fantastic job. I think this team that we've picked today has been considered. It's been... It, 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 we've done it properly today. Yeah. Exactly properly today, all right? Um, so I'm proud of you. Well done. Yeah, I'm um, happy with it, yeah. We'll, we'll go for Emery as a manager. I'm not, I've got no, no bones about that whatsoever. He has, he's done I'm very excited to read the comments. Yeah, I think but, the, the one video of the year that the comments are... Well, they're always good, but the comments... I can't see how you're going to get hammered this year. I can't see how we're going to get hammered. If you get down in the comments and hammer us this year, you lot, then you, you, you're miles off it. You no, really, really are. I think a few good debates, actually, because I think I don't agree with some of your selections, but I'm sure... Well, you don't agree with some no, of mine, but they're not controversial. I don't think there's any random no. things there. No. I don't think there's a random from the manager and this 11. I think the We ain't got Mason the... Mount at number 10 or anything no, like that. No, no, no. No Man United players. No Man United no players. No Man United players. We mentioned two all morning. Ganacho yeah. and Fernando. Uh, Anana, you, 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 we talked you, you, about Anana. United players, you need to get yourself on the Fozcast if you want to be in there. <laughs> That's the only way. That's the only way this year. <laughs> um, there you go, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, get in the comments down below. Let us know what you think. Uh, and any other notable mentions, please stick them down there too. Uh, we will see you next week, hopefully, for a bit of a Premier League review and uh, talking about what's going on. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.